Eve fails. We know the story. Genesis 3, 7, the eyes of both of them were open. They knew they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Why? Because the moment they knew they were naked, they were ashamed. Did you notice at the end of Genesis 2, they're naked and they're not ashamed? But in Genesis 3, 7, they're naked and they are ashamed. Because they substituted discern, learning how to discern the difference between good and evil by shortcutting it through effort and works. And they walked over to a tree and they picked the fruit and they ate it thinking, this will give us what we need. And we've been doing it ever since. We don't see the maturity. We don't see ourselves the way God sees us. So we go about religious works and, and chomp down on the fruit of our own performance going, surely this will do it. And we become blinded to the reality of God in our life. And we go about doing everything we can to cover ourselves with the fig leaves of religion so that we don't see how bad that we are, but really so God doesn't see how bad that we are. Because Adam and Eve were not only hiding from Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve were hiding from God. Yeah. And God is so good yeah. that even with them hiding in the bushes, He shows up and says, Adam, where are you? And Adam says, I'm hiding in the bushes. Okay? I'm hiding in the bushes. And I think God's doing this too. He's just foot padding. He goes, Adam, where are you? I'm hiding in the bushes because I was naked and I had to cover myself. And God doesn't say, what'd you do? Because God's not about spotlighting sin. God's about spotlighting you. And God says, who told you you were naked? How'd you, how'd you figure that out? You see, Adam, it was all Eve Adam, it was always a reality that you were naked. I made you that way. And here's why. Now, this is what I believe. I believe this with all of my heart. God gave him two trees that were special. He didn't name banana trees and apple trees and orange trees. They were probably there. He named two. One, the knowledge of good and evil. One, the tree of life. And after Adam fails, God says to himself, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit say to themselves, we need to get him out of the garden lest he eat from the tree of life and live forever. We don't want him to live in a fallen state. I want to transform him. I don't want him to live forever fallen. Wow. So let's don't let him eat from the tree of life. God's intention, he couldn't have put that tree there if he didn't want you to eat it. He just didn't want you to eat it on your terms. Listen, I'm going to go real careful here. He wanted you to eat it on his terms. He, he wanted you to be naked. He just wanted you to grow. He wanted you to learn to discern the difference in good and evil by eating from life. And the more you ate from life, the more you would discern the difference in good and evil. And then you and him would take care of the nakedness together. But God shows up in the garden one day and you've already taken care of the nakedness. And God goes, how'd you know you were naked? You see, you understand what's happening in Genesis. You understand why this book isn't about you. This book is about a man named Jesus who has to get that guy back. We have to win him back. We have to take care of him. We have to become him. He's a failure because he doesn't know how to find the difference in good and evil. Now he's a right and wrong guy. See, what happens to Adam in the garden is he immediately becomes a right and wrong guy. It's wrong for me to be naked. It wasn't wrong at the end of chapter 2. It was very good. But now that he's accepted the poison of this dimension, this world, and he's thinking like this world thinks, which was all the enemy ever wanted him to do anyway. Come on down here to my level. The moment he does that, now he's a right and wrong guy. It's wrong to be naked, so i got to put on clothes. And God says, who told you you were naked? Man, I just wanted you, to, me and, you and me to walk. Now, how do I know this is true? Because, gosh, i got to hurry. Uh, you remember when Jesus is walking after resurrection? on the road to Emmaus. See, this is why we got to study these little Bible stories because they all, they're just like his tapestry. Man, they're this beautiful interweaving story in the Bible. All of it, Jesus being pulled back to Jesus. Jesus walking down the road on resurrection Sunday night and there's two disciples going from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Remember this? Seven mile walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Two disciples. All of a sudden, boom, there's Jesus. But they don't see him. The Bible says their eyes were blinded. They don't see him. And he says, what's going on? Why are you so sad? And they go, well, we thought he was the one. We, and there's a whole lesson right there that even his own disciples, upon his death, said he wasn't the one. Because they wasn't looking for anybody to save them from their sins. They were looking for someone to kill Caesar. That's another message. <laughs> They're walking down the road. And the disciples go, we thought he was the one, but he's not. Haven't you heard? This guy died, and we loved him, and, and we thought he was the one. And the Bible says that Jesus, and they don't know it's Jesus, that Jesus begins to open up the scriptures concerning himself from the law and the prophets. In other words, Jesus starts quoting the Torah and says, here was your guy, here was your guy, here was your guy, oh, Jesus. 
This was, here, this was him. And I think he starts pointing at all these great Bible stories. Remember that fourth man in the fire? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And one who looks like the Son of God? There, there's your guy. Remember, remember the anointing you smear the ark, of the, cup, the ark over with? Yeah, yeah, th th there's your guy. Remember Daniel? He goes on and on and on and on. The Bible says they get to where they're going. They sit down. Jesus breaks bread, hands it to them. They swallow it. The moment they swallow, the Bible says their eyes were opened. And they realize what had happened. And Jesus disappears. And they look at one another and says, Oh my gosh, how did we miss it? Did our hearts not burn inside of us when we spoke with Him on the road? We had heartburn. It was blasting through our chest. We just didn't realize what we had because we were blind. And I saw one day in the Spirit, what God did on the road to Emmaus was He took man back to the garden. He said, here's how I wanted you to discover your nakedness. I wanted to commune with you until the scales fell off your eyes. But that's slow. It's slow. And you got to be patient because not everybody in your church is going to live right. Because we don't, we don't have any patience and time for people to get it wrong. Even though spiritual maturity is the discernment, not of getting it right, but of getting it good.